This is your, uh, what would you call it? Yeah, like a my, shrine? This is my everyday morning, is put the water. You put the water? Yeah. This step at in seven coming, this put morning water. Then more water after all is finished, then butter lumps, oil will chew and the puja. And the puja? Yes. Ah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you keep the candle burning yeah. uh, throughout the day? Yes. And the night as well? Night is also, yeah. So it's always burning? Yeah. yeah. Always burning? Yes. Uh-huh. Wow. <laughs> so nice. This one, so... Holiness Dalai Lama. Yeah. This one, Karmapa. Karmapa? Yeah. Ah. Oh. Big Lama. Oh, so I've I've heard of Dalai Lama, obviously, yeah, this but this, this younger is man is... Karmapa. Karmapa. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you have like images of the Buddha this as well. One, this one is Sakya, Sakya Kumar Bhutsin. Okay. Very high Lama. Very high Lama. Mm -hmm. And you have images of uh, yeah, the yeah. Buddha. Yeah, yeah. Buddha as well. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I love these. Uh, is it Tanka? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, name Tanka. Tanka yeah. I think it's so such so nice the art <laughs> with one uh, one yak thread the the true artists they do it with yeah, one yeah. yak thread right mm -hmm. this is golden sunstone sunlight many shining stone this one. okay yeah mm -hmm. so you have bracelets and uh, necklaces too you necklace you need necklace? Yeah. Uh, well, I think I prefer a, a bracelet, but I just, I notice you have all these, these are malas, yeah, mala beads, huh? Yeah, yeah. This also mala beads. Mala bead. Oh, this is turquoise. nice. Turquoise. Turquoise, yeah. yeah. It's a nice color, turquoise. Mm -hmm. This black onyx mala. Uh -huh. Black onyx. Black onyx? Yes, yeah. So you've got black onyx yeah, yeah. mala, turquoise mala. Yeah, yeah. And you, the mala, of course, is for the meditation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. It's for agat. Agat? Yeah. Ah. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. I met a woman recently called Agat. <laughs> <laughs> she was from France. Yeah, yeah. Oh, party rope. Namaste.
eating food. Loads of it. Courtesy of the Tibetan Buddhist community. <laughs> so nice. I want to live in a community like this. Can you see? Go here. <laughs> <laughs> so much. See you next time. Yes. Yeah. Do a good <laughs> Thank you. And to so you much. too. Thank, Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Wow. <laughs> Namaste. Wow. You know, my friend Rohan, he was like, you know what Nepal stands for? And I was like, I don't know. He's like, never ending peace and love. Oh. Bantipur. He goes to Dumre. Okay, cut, cut you. Four hundred. Four hundred. Okay, I can put my bag in here. Okay. Okay. Don't you worry. Hmm? It's an awkward place to stand. Son, how old is your son? Um, two years. He completed two years last month. Two years. Wow. I'm thirty and I have no wife or no child. <laughs> you should get married soon. <laughs> I might get married. Who knows? Never you don't know until it happens, I guess. Yeah. <sighs> and uh, what is a uh, like Nepali wedding like? Is it crazy? Big celebration? Yeah. We got almost, almost 350 people. Uh, after having a kid, like we have a naming ceremony, wedding ceremony. So in all these things, um, we are uh, like we have to we have to and we will also you know mm -hmm. welcome example like i'm in a small town in bandipur and i know there are lots of my neighbors i know everyone in bandipur okay mm -hmm. so if i have any function in my home we invite them like one person from one home you have like nice whenever there's a celebration yeah. the whole town is here yeah the whole town oh. is here and oh. as well as my relatives who are out of town like we call all the neighbors like who are in the town, all the people, as well as not all. I mean, like one from one home, like, mm -hmm. and then as well as our. The most important is our relatives, like my grandparents. They live out from here. We have to invite them. My father's brothers and sisters, you know, and from my mom's side again, mom's family and everyone. They mm -hmm. have to come. We have to invite them. You know. Yeah. So there will be lots of people. Wow! <laughs> big big celebration, huh? Wow, I'd love to go to one of these, uh, somehow, like, manage to go to one of these weddings. Really? Yeah, I think it would be fun to see. I think it's an interesting thing to see in any other culture, like the, the big celebrations. You, see, you kind of have a good glimpse into how that culture yeah. operates, in let a way. Me, let me check if I find some. I will let <laughs> I, I find it fascinating as well that there's this um, I do truly believe you create your own reality depending on what you choose to believe and I think science is already finding that out like in pretty, it's pretty much known in science that reality is an apparent illusion yeah. but it's all created in your head but this is something that like uh, Buddhism has been saying for hundreds and hundreds of years. I think Hinduism has been saying the same thing, same right? Thing, yeah. um, 
I mean, I suppose it depends on like whether you choose to view the gods in any religion as actual gods or they can also just represent um, ideas or or they represent parts of yourself because um, I do th or at least I'm starting to believe that that you you have all the gods contained within you as I do as well right do you, do you think religions can live together Yes, I can see definitely this Hinduism and Buddhism, they can live together. Yes. But now there's, there are lots of in different places, you know. Um, it's between different religions, like they're fighting each other and people are just going deeply on it. And even uh, there are um, some people, they are just traveling to different rural areas and they're, they're motivating people, I should come in this religion and you there will be this kind of benefit, this kind of benefit. So this is how they are motivating people actually. But actually, to be religiotic, if you believe in some religion, you're religiotic. I mean, like, yes, it's your choice to go, to go where. Uh -huh. So, example, you are Christian, you come to me, mm -hmm. you say come to Christianity. I would say yes for a moment, but my heart would not go. Ah, okay. I mean, like, yes, yeah, you I believe, understand. You do that much. I don't mean that Christianity is not nice, but. I can say I can go to church with my friend. Mm -hmm. I was in Arabic country. I worked for I, I work in two Arabic countries, Qatar and Dubai. I went to mosque with them. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so you can join your friends in their of place course. of worship, but you have to follow your heart, right? I will follow my heart. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm Hindu. I must go to temple, not to mosque. I can go anywhere. If you believe, you will see every religion together. You will see every god, one god. All these religions, yes. they have their different. Um, ways of talking and they have the different um, gods and they have their different um, stories but really they're all they're all in pursuit of the same truth and they're all talking about the same like absolute truth right um, so when people go to war over it they've kind of I don't know <laughs> maybe taking things too literally or they've just kind of missed the point or or it's become like an ego thing and, and that's where it becomes destructive and that is the thing ego which word this one is the word mm -hmm. which makes the people difference which, which creates the bar between the people these egos and these words are created by the people not by the books and not by the ancient religion these are only created by the people right now I, I was reading um, on the bus actually um, Dalai Lama talking about introduction to Buddhism and he was saying the same thing like he said that he, he believes not only is it possible for the religions to live together because he just sees them as different medicines basically but that it's it's necessary like it, it's so necessary now we can't we can no longer live with religions going against one another and he, he also says that everyone should know about their neighbor's religion so you, you study your own and you might go like you say you might go to church with your friend or, or a mosque with your friend and you maybe it doesn't it doesn't call to your own heart but you still can go because you in your head and as a human being who follows your own religion you can understand that as well this morning i go to the buddhist temple to pay my respects the idea is that i will um go there make a donation and uh, take a prayer with the monk for myself and loved ones and really um, for the rest of humanity. I do not really film inside the temple. Um, one because it's very difficult <laughs> to film myself doing um, the acts of prayer and worship and devotion. Um, but secondly, and most importantly, it's um, it seems disingenuous and uh, interfering and somehow polluting of the uh, purity of the process. The process is fairly straightforward. Um, I went in there today, I saw the uh, monk who I met yesterday um, and at his permission I sat down on the floor, I closed my eyes, I meditated for about half an hour 
and whilst meditating I focused on my intention um, and my intention was really to send out um, support and an energy of love towards um, particular family members um, and I found that my heart expanded in doing so and really just went beyond um, those family members to anyone really um, I found that the energy took on its own life force and I just instead found myself focusing on that feeling and focusing on radiating that feeling and energy to others my meditation um, the mantra Om Mahani Padme Hum was playing um, and occasionally the monk would repeat it so I focused on that mantra too following the meditation um, I was then engaged in a moment of contemplation just looking at their shrine of the Buddhas they have there they have about six uh, main golden Buddhas um, and around these Buddhas are all these different images of um, Buddhist philosophy and um, representations of deities and things like this and I contemplated on their images and they're all slightly different images which connote to various different um, human states and realms and after contemplating I then um, was given a stick of incense which I lit using one of the candles at the altar um, I then rotated this slowly with my right hand whilst the monk chanted after this I raised my hands to my crown to my throat to my heart and then I kneeled pressed my head to the floor and I repeated that process three times and finally I took um, some I guess purified or holy water for lack of a better way of describing it um, but it was water from the uh, offering bowls that had been um, imbued with the taste of the flowers and I took that a little bit in the well of my left palm I drank from it and placed the rest on my forehead and that was it and um, it's incredible how taking that time to your day practicing some act of devotion making your day sacred from the outset really just takes you into a, a higher state of consciousness a really beautiful state of consciousness a state of consciousness I will now carry on forward with me today and it will inform how I interact with the world how present I am the love I try and give to myself and others throughout the day and yeah just to be open and ready to give people a piece of my heart <laughs> not necessarily my mind. Oh, and another thing to look out for is leopards. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Do you hear any growling in the bushes? Um, I, don't, I don't really know what you should do. I guess just like crouch, kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> like what are you going to do against the leopard really? I, I go into temples, but I think if you're being very serious about it you should wear you should cover your knees apparently yeah, knees and shoulders, knees right? and shoulders yeah. yeah no vests no shorts really yeah. namaste bye <laughs> tikcha 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 hot hot <laughs> hot <laughs> for you gormi it's hot gormi ah okay danya bye subadin Gormi. Learning words. It's tricky language. Yeah, I only know Danibat and Fas. <laughs> Danibat, what's the second one you know? Fas. Fas. It just means okay, like Fas. Okay. Fas. Fas. H U S S. Oh. Fas. Fas. Yeah. Fas. Oh, I like that one. I'll have to write that down. Because they are a bit too uh, small for my feet. 
I also notice a lot of uh, places I go into, the Nepali tell me to mind my head because <laughs> the doorways are a little too short for me. And I have hit my head several times already. Does it, it looks like it goes the same way, no? Maybe, yeah. I mean, that's more... Is it a different route? I'm not sure if this... As long as... Oh my gosh, look at that mountain. As long as we remember the way back. Yeah. You want to go that way? Um, what's this way? This way... It's looking like a path, but just quite overgrown. Oh, that should be someone's house, right? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Hey. Namaste. This way, huh? Uh -huh. Oh, cave this way. Ah. ah, we took the wrong turn. Took the wrong turn. <laughs> okay. I'll let, them, let this guy pass. Well, it was a nice view. So this is to someone's home. Maybe. Ah, so the cave is back, this other path. Ah, he said this one, one house. Yeah. House, yeah, down uh -huh. in the middle. Ah. Okay. So we're aiming for... We're aiming over there. Okay, daddy, daddy, done your bad. You saved us. <laughs> Super Dean. I guess you're kind of learning, like, what the perception of the white Western traveller is, by and large. But who knows? Yeah, that. Don't say that. Some rustling in the bushes. Nice. That would freak me the hell out. I was quite loud, Russell. I didn't hear a rustle. Let's walk a bit faster. <laughs> I think isn't it best to like make your presence known when you walk through? To be like that. No, presence known or not known. Is it a monkey? I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Do you have any leeches? Uh, nope. No ticks or nothing. Are you wearing socks? I am, but I only have trainer socks left. Ah. And I drank out of a water pool when I was up in the mountains when I was like, Can I have done that? You're probably all right. I was all right, yeah, yeah. It's the best place usually to drink water is in the mountains. It's fresh. Yeah. yeah. Before it's trickled down into the pollution of mankind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got these bracelets because I went to the... Not the wrong spot, I just went to a different spot, I guess, than we... I just looked up to Betton Refugee Camp and it took me to one, but there was more than one. Ah. So I went in and it was like dead, there was no one there. And then, like, this young girl runs up to me um, and she was like, hey, what are you doing here? Do you need help? I was like, oh, I think I'm in the wrong place. And then she said, no such thing as the wrong place. And I was like, oh, that's nice. Um, and then uh, I think her granddad came out of his house and he was like, he had like barely any teeth and he was just smiling this toothless grin towards me. And he took me into his house and he showed me his little living area yeah. and then, I mean, straight away he got all his beads out yeah. and I was like, for sure I'm buying something like, there's no way I'm just going to look at his house and not so I bought them and then I met Pip at the, the uh, initially agreed upon rendezvous point mm -hmm. um, it was by Devi's Falls yeah. I didn't think a huge amount of Devi's Falls, if I'm honest no, just going to be maybe I've just got like a I've seen enough waterfalls in my time, but um, and also I thought it was named after like a goddess, but apparently it's named after a Dutch woman called by the name of Davis who drowned in the waterfall. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then Pip met me there and then we went and the, the, the Tibetans gave us food. Oh, nice. We ate with them and they didn't want anything from us. We like offered to wash yeah. or do whatever we could and they were like, no, 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 we just give because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And then we just left, so... Yeah, it was really nice. 
got a lot of blood. Yeah. Oh, we might have to climb round. But I think we need a torch. I've got my phone torch, it's fairly strong. I should have bought my head torch. Hello? <laughs> Namaste? Oh, it's open. <laughs> Namaste? Maybe they're gone for lunch. <laughs> I've heard there's um, a Hindu ascetic who lives in here. That's natural air conditioning for you. Yeah. Right, this is so oh, right. There must be another entrance. This can't be the second ball just carrying it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to go? Uh, let's not get open back a bit. Well, this is an adventure. This is how horror films begin. <laughs> you know that, right? There's a rope that looks like you should go that way. Okay. Yeah, it's a path. <laughs> it's on the sound of bats. I think so. It sounds like running water. <gasps> That's freaky. <laughs> Let's go. Well, I can see how there was negative reviews. People that were just not ready for. Well, it's a cave, isn't it? I think <laughs> if like they are pretty freaky, like yeah. not freaky, like there's nothing weird about them. It's just more they're spooky. Yeah. The darkness. I can't believe someone lives in there. I don't know, I just heard, I read also that apparently very, very deep in the cave there's a um, Hindu ascetic, oh, wow. which is someone who just lives without anything really, in, in search of their um, enlightenment. But there's also plenty of people who say you don't need to go live in a cave for years upon years to reach enlightenment. <laughs> We tried, we couldn't go further, we thought we'd be sensible and I think that was the wise decision. Um, otherwise we might have been headlines. Two English tourists break their legs in the deepest depths of the second largest cave in Asia. Quite an interesting journey we did. From the clouds to the cave, back to the clouds. <laughs> the hero's journey. And the shrooms just like, I don't know, exaggerate that. Yeah. So I could be sat here like, oh my gosh, I'm part of this earth. I'm connected to this rock. There's no way I could leave this mountaintop. I'm kind of feeling that right now. Yeah. Well, I also think it's amazing how you don't really need anything either. You just, you just go to a a spot like this and you get a huge dose of nature and you just like like even just looking now 
we're so in insignificant. <laughs> like we're so tiny, we're like ants oh, ourselves. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how the ants must feel, but <laughs> they probably don't even know. But I guess if you're so tiny in this universe, then it's um, you should just have a. It just gives you a license to enjoy life a bit more. I think. Like we're not huge gods controlling the weather and all that. We just are little humans. Little humans. Although sometimes our egos will make us think we're bigger than we are.